Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. This is a first of a series of conversations uh, that are intergenerational. Um, this came from the great idea of Lanish Miller White, who is uh, my colleague and who I defer to often. Um, so um, the idea comes from the, the, the idea that we're using for the Painted Bride, deep roots, old future. So th this is what we're bringing together with these conversations. And we have a series of five of them that will happen over the next six weeks. So there's not one next week, but the following week there is um, Sudan Green and Ursula Rucker. Sudan is her son. Um, and um, I think that we're ready to get started. So this is an unscripted conversation between Sumi and Arnetta. So I'm gonna give a brief introduction to them, but their websites are gonna be in the chat box if you want to go and find more of them, about them. So Sumi is described as fierce and fascinating composer and pianist for over 30 years. And I have to agree with you on that. Arnetta, who began her relationship with her trumpet when she was 13. You may have seen her at the Painted Bride with the Trumpet Chicks. And uh, it was a show curated by J. Michael Harrison of WRTI that included Hannibal Lacumbe as well. Right. So uh, to get started, oh, and also if anybody has any questions, you can type them into the chat box. We're definitely taking questions and, and the artists will respond. So we're gonna start with the question, what do you do to cope in this time? Arnetta, do you wanna start? Yeah, I'll start off with that. Uh, you know, given that we're we're dealing with a lot right now, you know, with COVID, and as I was saying prior, the the re rise of you know the the talks of social justice and you know out in the streets protesting for our rights. Um, to cope right now, of course, as an artist, of course, I'm going straight to the music. You know, composing, working with other artists. Uh, not not only just playing but you know putting together stories to be told through the music you know so that not only we like my my group can understand but so that the mass is going to understand so you know coming up with different creative ways to reach the the generation below me and above me so we've been doing that and also as an artist uh i feel like it's my responsibility as much as i play about topics going on right now, I have to study. So I've been doing a lot of studying, um, a lot of research, Bravo. Uh, taking book recommendations, you know, being a reader, because I feel like that translates into my artistry. So that's pretty much along the lines of, of what I've been doing to, to cope. I feel like me growing to, to just to just soak this all in is just me informing myself, because you know, uh, the only way to get through this is if you're well informed so that you just know how to transition. So that's very well put. And I'm also so happy to hear you say that. But you know what's funny, Arnetta, is that it never ends, you know? It, it never gets to a point where like you've read enough books or, you know, because there's always there's always that place to go to to keep learning and to keep informing yourself. Cause as much history has happened, none of us know everything do you know what i mean and it's even like that way musically which is one of the reasons why i love being in the world of music is that there's no end to it you know so um because i've been doing something similar in the sense that i mean i came i'm a child of the 60s i grew up you know during the civil rights movement and the women's movement and the black liberation movement and all of this was going on it was happening in the music it was happening in the people my parents were radicals so you know i uh grew up um, protesting, <laughs> you know, my father was a Marxist. He was a union man and machinist. He worked at the Campbell Soup Company and my mother was Japanese American and had been interned in this country at the age of 16 and had kind of embraced radical politics as a way of dealing with, you know, some of her anger and, and, and uh, I would say trauma really from, from that having happened to her, you know, at that age. Um, so all this to say that I, um, this all feels so familiar and as, as bad as it is, I'm, at, I'm at the same time, really happy to see that there is this movement happening right now, 
and that it that so many young people are out in the streets and that it's galvanizing and and uniting us in a way that is so vital at this moment you know i mean of course COVID, i think has framed it in a particular kind of way there's you know because there's these two two extremes happening at the same time and um right. so one of the things i've been doing is i've been doing the kind of something similar where i've been going back and listening to people like james baldwin and angela davis and you know all the people i came up with malcolm x um these were uh martin luther king these were great leaders during that time you know we don't have those kinds of voices right now and i don't i'm i'm voices leaders they were true leaders like really like had an incredible ability to speak and to 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 uh gather and raise the consciousness of people and to bring out the best in us you know and that's not so we don't have those kind of leaders right now although i do feel that people are going to emerge, you know, like they're like more women mm -hmm. right now, like running for office and, and there are more black women and there are more, um, uh, it's not to say it's not out there. Like they're, they're not those people who are going to emerge, you know, but so I've been doing something similar in, in the sense of going back and reading more and also, um, going back to listen again, to kind of reframe, uh, some of the times that I came up in, and to kind of uh, uh, also address what it is like, cause I had started writing something, composing something. I had gotten a, the Chamber Music America New Jazz Works grant, right? And I had started working on something and then COVID hit. And then this, you know, with George, George Floyd's murder and this whole sort of chain of events that had happened to kind of, you know, galvanize this movement. Um, I really had to take a step back for a minute you know, and, and kind of pause. And this time has given us, we were just talking about this before this meeting opened, the opportunity to, I guess, kind of reset, you know what I mean? To think and reset. Mm -hmm. Cause I had to kind of rethink what I was doing. It was like, is this really what I want to be writing now? Like maybe I want to think more about what I want to do moving forward, you know? Right. Um, but I, anyway, so I, I'm just really pleased to hear you say that because it's so important, you know, as artists, I think, I mean, I, I, one of my favorite artists is Nina Simone, you know, mm -hmm. she's so fierce and, and, and just had this sense of herself and her, you know, just a tremendous message that she, you know, her, I think part of her message was that it is the artist's responsibility to address their times, you know, and um so i've been thinking a lot about that what that means now and moving forward right so it's like you know with stuff like that you know of course we all know when, when we say cope it means find a way to to be oh to be okay in times uh i would just make that clear as saying of course you know None of us are okay with the pandemic going on right now. None right. of us are okay with social injustices, you know, that's, but coping basically meaning a, a way that, you know, I could keep my sanity in the midst of all this. Like I know me personally, as I was saying, I just can't sit back in any form of way, you know, in regards to any of these matters. Um, because it's, it's not like social injustice you know, us, us fighting against racism was something that j just started happening. Right. <laughs> happening forever. Right. Um, and I don't know if I'm saying this right, but it's, it's almost, I took this as my opportunity given that I'm only 26 and, right. you know, this was one of the first times I was able to, you know, sit down and literally focus directly in on you know like studying black civics that's something i was never taught in school it never happened um didn't wasn't even familiar with what it was what it meant literally until like now that i was able to dive into it and the crazy thing is as i was learning about it of course artists came up musicians came up um and that just blew my mind and it and it just led me on a journey of realizing that there there is activism in the arts you know i can use my music to to be an activist and i think that that is great um so what are what are some of the things that you're learning like as uh like 
let's say in terms of some of the things you've recently discovered and how is it affecting the way you're thinking about presenting your your music okay so let's talk about the the biggest elephant in the room when a lot you know towards the middle of the protests everybody was on the whole defund the police thing but not a lot of people knew what it meant so I, of course i started studying okay what do what do people mean when they say defund the police okay so next thing you know as i'm going to look this up i see an article about camden pop up oh wow so i'm like oh okay they got camden up here okay let's see what this is about i go to read it and i'm like nothing in this article that they're saying is happening we have a problem so then uh you know where is like propaganda pop up and and how you know these messages are just being being spread wrong so in my city to address issues as such like how the media is using you know the ignorance of the people to you know skew their minds uh in my city we have what is called Camden Arts. So what's going? What they did was they formed our own protest where we protested through the arts. So we had performers from the city uh, go to. We marched to city hall, made our demands. You know, I always tell everybody protest with a purpose. Protest with a purpose. It is important. And I have my friends from the city. They they perform in their in their songs. Were all about things going on in the in Camden uh, about you know violence going on in the city and you know it all draws back to the topic of defunding the police so I learned in defunding the police it doesn't mean do away with it. it just means take some of the millions and put it towards things in the city like the arts you have people in urban areas such as myself some of the most creative people that we know are in the inner cities you know where we're when we were young, just running around with balls of energy. I always tell people, you know, we're so quick to look at the street corners and say, oh man, look at those young kids out there wasting their lives. You know, people say that all the time. I don't see it as that. I look at it, I say, man, that's some dedication. Imagine if somebody or a program that was well-funded in the city took these kids and say, hey, while you're standing out there this whole time, you could be doing this with that amount of time. Boom. That right there so it's stuff like that that we just started brainstorming and you know made our list of demands to the city so, so what is what was what was on the, that list i'm curious so one fund the arts in camden the arts is taking a major hit like crazy our our band programs are poorly funded we could barely get um buses to even go to performances it's that bad it is that bad we could barely get buses to go to performances so one if you're putting obstacles as such in the way, it discourages not only the teachers, but the students. It's like, oh, it's a hassle. We can't even get there. We want to play, but uh, we don't feel like cramming into a into a car like this to go perform. So it's stuff like that. Uh, instruments. Our schools don't have funding for instruments. So students might want to play a violin, but then end up having play, having to play trumpet because the school doesn't have any. Hence how I ended up playing trumpet because my mm -hmm. school didn't have any string instruments. <laughs> so it's stuff like this where I'm like, why well, you have our de police department with a uh, Well, in nice... that case, it was a good thing. It, it turned, it, you know, we made it work. We made it work. So it's like, this is just talking like on surface level because it, it really gets deep. No, I understand. When, it I understand. Talk, when, you, know, when you talk about the, the, the monetary aspect of this, but... It's just things like that, like hiring the proper teachers to teach in the inner cities. You know, you can't have somebody that has no training in, you know, for to teach in the urban areas, you know, because that's a different, it's a different mindset that you're dealing with. And, you know, it could get a little crazy. So I'm thinking of stuff like that. Like when I was in school and I was that kid that teachers might have thought, man, she's hard to teach. When it wasn't, I wasn't hard to teach. I just had a different way of learning. Mm -hmm. But when I was given a teacher, a music teacher that understood that, boom, that's when I realized, oh, man, trumpet is actually fun. I'm not just using this to get out of class. So, <laughs> yeah, it's like it's, it's stuff like that. It's a, it's a really hefty conversation. I'm just trying to, like, really keep it just really narrow for now. But, you know, just just things like that, like really narrowing it down to the arts on my end since that's my my forte. So.
that's that's great that you did that. That's so great to hear. Um, and that's really where it's at. You know what I mean? Like being there, doing it, and taking action in that way. Did they mm -hmm. listen? Did they? I mean, did they give any any budget to the arts at all? Did was it successful? Uh, so right now in the city. Uh oh. Spike again. So the monies were now being shifted towards ways for health related reasons. So now they're they're in the talks of still continuing to get the schools back to normal. That's the last I read of. And I was against that because my thing was normal never worked for the arts in Camden, New Jersey, because they were never properly funded. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to go back to normal. I want to go to a new version where we are properly funded, where, you know, you have transportation for the students, you have the proper teachers for the students, and instead of hiring people from somewhere else, hire people in the city, you know, that want to teach. You know, I've had friends that went to college, did everything they, they were supposed to do, got their degrees, came back to teach in Camden, couldn't get a position, had to go move to another state to go teach. And it was very unfortunate because they couldn't be a help to their, they couldn't teach their own, you know, their students in their own city. Um, so it's things like that. So, so yeah. It's yeah, I know, um, you know, Anthony Tidd posted an article where it had a graphic for the amount, what the amount of money was going towards each, you know, area. And the, the police and the prison system had a black line that went almost to the Ooh. top of the page, right? And, the arts and then the arts, arts they, they, I mean, it was, they didn't give any money to the arts, none, oh, zero man. dollars. I know that's an oxymoron, zero dollars, none. Yeah. And, you know, just to see that disparity, even for education, education was like, you know, like this. And, and the, I mean, it just, it just mm -hmm. the, the instant visual of that was so hard hitting, you know, Right. And that's so, why I, I tell people you have to, you know, protest with the purpose. You have to create with the purpose. Everything has to be done with the purpose because we're in a very sensitive moment right now. So we can't be out here, you know, just making songs just to be like, oh, man, this beat is dope. It's like, OK, the beat is cool. We need to be doing things to, yeah, we need to be doing things to put a message out. Yeah, um, absolutely. Not to say... I always tell people not to say that we don't deserve to be happy. We do deserve to be happy. So that might be your purpose, simply just being happy. But, you know, we, we have to be intentional right now. This is a very, very sensitive time. And in my opinion, it's sensitive because things are actually getting done. Yes. That's why you're sensitive. Uh, you know, like before, like, you know, like there's a huge social media craze of it was like a, a tug of war on like how people would use martin luther king so you had people arguing saying martin luther king stood stood for this and he and he protested and did it this way and then you had your people saying yeah but that's not the only way you could protest so it was like a lot of a lot of that was happening um and the thing is i always bring up the civil rights movement because although somebody had put up a post saying, you know, the way Martin Luther King did it, you know, laws got passed, you know, Civil Rights Act. Yes, it got passed, but I always tell everybody, if the Civil Rights Act actually worked, we wouldn't be here right now. Mm. We wouldn't be here right now. So that still shows we are, we still have a lot of work to do and artists are just as much accountable since we are, you know, the entertainment world. Everybody wants to be entertained. It's the, the language of the world. We're all artists in, in our own respect. So we, we have a responsibility with it. So. Well, I'm glad to hear you feel that way. Yep, that's, that's why I'm going hard. I'm definitely, I'm definitely. You know, you're cutting out. I'm, I'm, I'm getting parts of you that are cutting out. Oh, Wi-Fi. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, Arnetta. 
Yeah, I can't. I didn't. I missed the whole first part of your sentence. Oh no! I'm going to connect to my hotspot. Hopefully, to here so that you could keep my signal there. Okay. Once you join, here we go. All right. How about? Am I good now? Yes, that's much better. All right. I, mean, before, I just cool. miss. I've been missing some of what you've been saying. Oh, let me try to remember. Um, I was saying, be intentional. What's going on? No, I heard all that. I mean, just recently, the last thing. I oh, okay. Yeah, Pretty yeah. much. I'm just saying, there is not only one form of protest. That's essentially what I'm I know, trying to say. You were talking about um, Martin Luther King and the different ways that he was, you know, yeah. What, what so that, and the different in the ways people were perceiving what he was doing. Right. You yeah. had some people trying to. I don't know if this is the right word. Trying to what's the use his form of protest to tell us to settle down if that makes sense because you had you know you have some of us out here we're like oh no we gotta take it right to the head like in in camden we had a protest where one of my friends who's maybe 22 or 23 he wrote a list of demands and during our protest walked right up the steps and handed it right to the police chief mm. All right. Handed it right to him. So, you know, some people look at that like, oh, that's really aggressive. All you guys should have just done is just stood there and, and sang your songs. And we're like, no, no, we need to be, you know, we, we need we need to take heed. You know, if I have the police chief standing right there, we're going to give him our demands. Simple as that. So, you know, these are, you know, again, my, my peers, they're artists as well. And they, we know how to use our voices, you know, whether it's through music or literally words. So it's just, it's just things like that that's been going on. Um, but what I, I think a good question is what, what has been one of your most noted conversations that you've been having recently? Like what topic, like in regards to, how do you narrow it down? I know people are asking a lot of questions, but in mm -hmm. terms of conversations, which one really stuck out the most to you, if that makes sense? Well, it does make a lot of sense, uh, but it's a tough question because there's a lot of questions right now, you know what I mean? And they're all kind of important. One of the ones that seems to be most um, on the tips of everybody's tongue, so to speak, you know, is the arts in general, what's going to happen to people uh, moving forward, what's going to happen to performing arts and especially jazz, you know, with what we have in terms of what it's going to look like on the other side of this. And people talk about, as you were saying earlier, what is going back to normal, what is that going to look like or whatever. And I think what's happening is that uh, we're going to have to end up and it's already happening in that we're using these types of platforms like Zoom, a lot of streaming, where everybody's getting more thinking outside the box in terms of getting, um, figuring out how to communicate and get your message out there and get your music out there and, and get it where people can um, feel what you're doing. And one of the things I think that I, I'm seeing is that, like what I liked about what you had said earlier, you were talking about linking your music up with a story like what story do you mm -hmm. want to tell that goes with what message do you want to deliver so some of the conversations have been about what does it look like what's it going to look like what do we want it to look like um where is this going where wh wh how can we use this move moment moving forward even in terms of the political you know to uh re-envision and reimagine and re kind of claim like what our responsibility is as artists mm -hmm. and also as human beings and for you and I as well as as women you know as black women you know all of those things it, you, you, so the the political is kind of cross cross-secting with sort of like this moment in terms of the whole globe you know like what's happening as a planet and I think the interesting thing about COVID is that it's happening to the whole world so in terms of us being human, and we're all affected in the same way. So here we are dealing with racism, right? 
And yet we're mm -hmm. dying as a species on the planet because we're all the same in terms of what we're made of. You know what I'm saying? So it's, and everybody's experiencing it on this kind of common level. So I think that COVID sort of set the stage to kind of deal with this in a new way, in some ways, you know what I mean? Because it's mm -hmm. like the fact that the, to, so to me, what's really new about what's happening now, as opposed to the 60s and the 70s, and it's not to say it wasn't happening to some extent before, but the fact that all of a sudden they're having marches in Germany and in, you know, South Africa, whatever, all over the globe, you know, about racism and addressing this, you know, um, the brutality towards black people, all of this, and the fact that it's kind of like caught on fire and it's going global, that to me is something really to celebrate. And mm -hmm. it's, it's promising to me um, that that is actually happening. And maybe we'll, as a, maybe we can have a new conversation and, and figure out new ways to deal with this issue, which has, we've been living through as human beings for, you know, for hundreds of years. I mean, it's just, it just, you know, when is it, how is it going to change? When is it going to change? When are we going to get to a point where, you know, this doesn't exist if ever, you know? Um, so I don't know. It's, it, I think that's a real, what about you? What kinds of, what are, what kinds of questions are you having? Ooh. Your, we need to get some questions, okay? Um, yeah, between questions and topics, uh, I know, ooh, where do I even start with that? Um, well, can I ask you one? Because I have one for yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm curious as to what it is you want to do, like what you want. Like, I just want to hear you say that out loud. And I have another question that I wanted to um back it up with which is a little bit new agey but i was curious because i've been sort of talking to myself in the same way as a woman so uh -huh. let me just start with that just what is it uh, that you want Ooh, okay see that's actually a very challenging question for somebody like me because it's 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 so just open um what do i want uh Let's see, in, in terms of music, oh, I would love for my music to reach the masses, you know? I, I want my music to reach the masses. Uh, I want my voice to be heard, you know, in, in every aspect, you know, whether my voice is through words or through notes. Um, I, I want, you know, our demands to be met uh, right now, you know, all the, you know, the letters to companies have been putting out, you know, from the, you know, from the music companies on to, you know, all the way down to the sports companies, you know, they're, they're great. I say they're very cute, but you know, we would like our demands to be met. So I want actual change. Um, I want artists to continue doing what they're doing now. Uh, I don't know if anybody else realized, but almost every artist all of a sudden is putting out songs strictly for social change and i love it because it's forcing everyone to actually be an artist and not just somebody a part of a money making machine you know because in the industry it's it's a lot of people that are signed simply because oh man they're a catch not oh man they know how to get a message out so I feel like right now we're seeing our artists that know how to convey a message. We're seeing our artists that actually aren't scared to go out there and put their put themselves on the forefront. We're seeing who actually has a pen. We're actually seeing who has a pen game right now in the in the music world. And it's is is really it's really obvious for the ones that you can tell that, that sit down and can write, compose all of that. So I want that to continue. So that's about the best way I can answer that question. Um, That's great. Yeah, so. It's great to hear you say that. And you deserve all that and more. Uh, and I can't wait to see it happen. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, in terms of other things I want, you know, of course, I want my investments to, to pop off and, and to just flourish. Of course, you know, those are like the obvious things, like basic necessities and things like that. I want them to, to do good. You know, I want to be successful, but, you know, just to speak on 
you know, the, the bigger wants of things. You know, I, I really would love if artists continue where we are now and everybody just, you know, keep writing songs that have, you know, just good messages right now. Because um, I don't know if you saw, there was like this whole conversation uh, somebody had posted about rap music and how you know they they had came out about an artist saying a lot of the music you know sexualizes women you know praises gang violence and drugs and they were like it's a shame that that music even got that far that people were even entertaining it and I was like well yeah that's because it was part of the machine so it's like you you know you have your artists out here now and I heard a song on the radio the other day. Man, I wish I remembered the, the guy's name. Uh, he had wrote a song literally about the protest. It is so good. I just cannot remember his name. He's a rapper. It was so good. And I love to hear it on the radio. Rapping about how change needs to happen and how police brutality needs to stop. I'm like, this is, this is what we always wanted. This is perfect. This is perfect. We love to hear it. I love to hear artists advocating for change. So... That's so what let, I want to Let me at. ask you something. How do you see yourself um, getting your music out there nowadays? You know, because, I mean, in terms of how the path to that, because mm -hmm. I'm curious to know from your perspective and from your generation, particularly, um, uh, what that looks like to you and the ways in which you see yourself being um, empowered to to own that like you know what that looks like and the ways that you can see it happening because it doesn't look like i mean this is the thing i feel like as musicians we're dealing with right now there's been a revolution in terms of what music is and how it is and how we're dealing with it on every single level you know like once <laughs> music went digital um you know there are no more record stores there are no more i mean people aren't really i mean you have to wonder if it's worth it making a cd quote unquote these days because most mm -hmm. people listen to music virtually i mean that there's has been this huge revolution and we're in sort of in the midst of this change and it's like this is where i'm talking about you having to reimagine how it's going to happen and what you're going to do and how you're going to build your audience and how you're going to get your music out there and what it looks like to actually be a successful musician all how you're going to actually make money for your investments and all that so mm -hmm. tell me how you see that happening for yourself now i'm just curious I, I i think i could learn something from what your perspective might be all right so i'm look i'm still learning just as much as everyone else uh so from my my lane as a indie artist like as like about as indie as you can get as an artist <laughs> uh what i've been doing uh we just been going in with social media. It is yeah. content central. If you right. don't have content, you are not making it right now. That's period. Right. Literally. Just yeah. point blank, period. So, you know, you have to understand and have to accept and catch up to the fact that, you know, mu it, there's more to music than music. Yeah. And that goes down to you know how you're getting your music out there some people think oh if i just upload my song that'll be enough i'm like no that was never enough like never in the history of music was putting out music simply enough you have to perform so now since everything is on social media you gotta get on zoom and perform i've been doing tons of zoom performances it's like wow. crazy like in what what so zoom performances but what streaming like on it facebook or no um, so the same way we're in a meeting the same uh -huh. way we're talking right now uh, uh -huh. we'll have a segment somebody have a segment and they'll hire me and they'll say hey arnetta we just want to hire you to perform for five minutes and wow. i'll put together either a song or two uh -huh. or a compilation of songs and i'll perform um, so then, you know, musicians like myself, we have to put on our thinking caps and get very, almost get kind of techy, like kind of, you gotta be a little tech. So, cause you want your sound to be right. Cause if you perform, like if I turn on my speakers and play trumpet right to the computer, it's going to sound a little crazy. Right. So, uh, you know, we figured out ways to get our audio to sound crystal clear on zoom calls. Wow. Uh, so it's like right now, I could have had a whole microphone set up and me talking through a mic right now, but I'm like, eh, 
you know, it's like that's down to a matter of choice. But if I was performing, you know, we have our our uh, our saw our gear, our musical gear, our studio gear that we set up to perform. So doing things like that, performing through Zoom, uh, doing Facebook live performances with our bands, uh, mm-hmm. if it's safe. Because that's a factor as well that a lot of people are, you know, iffy with. You know, you have your people doing live stream performances with their bands, but you have some people where it's still hard. Like myself, I have a eight to nine piece band. I would love to perform my band, but as as the band leader, I've been telling myself, I don't want to put my band members at risk since Absolutely. a lot of them have families. So I've been on hold and just doing solo performances mm-hmm. this whole time. Yeah. Um, so just things like that, uh, speaking, speaking engagements such as this, been doing some of them, right. which has been, which have been good. Uh, because as I, as I said, I never want my artistry just to narrow down to the sound, you know, so, you know, definitely doing speaking engagements, um, things like that, uh, investing in myself, you what know, do you mean by and, that? investing in what ways? So uh, when I invest in myself, one, some people think it just means to give yourself a pat on the back. <laughs> and I always tell people, no, like I literally invest in myself. Um, so let's take it something basic down to the, to the stimulus check. Uh, so the government sent us $1,200. Whoa. So with that, you know, we got to think the industry is down. And it's a hard pill to swallow to think when about when it's going to open back up because we don't know. And that is a harsh reality. We just don't know. So you take your $1,200 like me, you figure out, okay, do I want to invest this in putting out two songs maybe? Or do I want to invest this in the stock market? Or do I want to put this money to a home investment? So things like that. So I, I do things like that throughout the day. I'll just figure out where I could just splash my money in different areas, in Good different you. investments. Boy, so, you're young to be thinking that way. That's great. I yeah. Never thought, I never felt like that when I was your age. It's a, I it's still a new don't time. understand the stock market. I still don't oh, understand that. Yeah, stocks. Yeah, I could I could go for a while about the Good stock market. Good for you, Arnetta, <laughs> man. And you're advanced, right. I have to say. <laughs> it, it, this, this is what happens when, you know, musicians that are on the go, uh-huh. Um, now that we have been forced to sit down, we have time, we have time and it is precious. So I've been that person. Some people might say it's not good, but it's so good to it. You know, I don't know how to do nothing. So I'm the person that's going to be on my laptop looking up information all day, like all day. I could do it. So like, you know, the same way you see little kids on their, um, on their iPads, looking at their TV shows all day. That's me in somebody's book or in somebody's info session, literally, or in somebody's workshop. I've been doing things like that. Uh, I've, also, I've also been um, looking for conversations just like this from mm-hmm. uh, mentors. Like I know Tia Fuller, a saxophonist, she, uh, she has her talk with Tia's on Tuesdays. So I go and listen to that to see what they're doing. Cause you know, I'm following in their footsteps and you know, they're definitely way more established than me. So I'm like, okay, so since we're all in the same situation with the music industry being now, what are y'all doing so that I can yeah. figure out what I need to be doing as well? Well, there's an interesting question. I just noticed on the chat. Um, how do you envision us performing artists? This is from Ursula Rucker. Eh, okay. Uh, for yeah. us performing artists moving by the way, hey, Ursula, I'm so glad you're here. I'm a big fan yeah. of you. I was just checking you out on, on uh, uh, Instagram the other day. <laughs> you are fierce. <laughs> <laughs> um, whoa. So um, uh, so how, how do you envision us performing? Or, or do you just want to join the conversation, Ursula? Turn your, and uh, turn your, hi. Hey, I, I, I would have been in here, but I'm, I'm walking around my room getting ready for, my Zoom gig right after this, Arnetta. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, <cool. laughs> so you have it. Yeah, you have your question here. Why don't you just we could just shoot it out and we'll respond. 
Okay. Well, thank you. Well, first of all, you're both badasses. So bless up to both. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I was just talking to my son about this earlier today. Cause he was like, you can't tour mom. What are you going to do? I'm like, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. I haven't really, um, really given it much thought. Cause we're like in timeless time right now. So yeah. I, I don't know what's going on. Uh, so yeah, I'm just kind of like, I haven't really posed that question to anyone. Uh, how, how are we, you know, as performing artists who really live as performing artists and, and live from performing, you know, um, and not just, not just financially. I mean, like for our mental health, you know, when we perform, it's how we stay sane. Exactly. So, like, how, how do you envision like us moving forward or have you envisioned it or are you just kind of like going with bizarre world flow right now well i know for myself i i feel like it's like time to take it into your hand our hands you know what i mean like i don't j just to be right now is not a moment to be exactly passive i mean you know what i mean because it's like i feel like we're going to end up having to reimagine i keep using that word reimagine but in many ways it's so true you know, in terms of what can it look like for you to do what it is that you do, to still reach people, to still communicate, to still keep that a part of yourself that's true and alive. And maybe there'd be new ways for you to do it. You know, like, so what we're doing right now, for instance, we're having this conversation uh, through the Bride series, you know, about this moment in time as artists and, and what we're going to do moving forward. And I think that it's like, these types of platforms that can give us new ideas to share. For instance, look at something like Tid's, um, Anthony Tid's uh, festival that he did, uh, Act for Music, which joined all of these musicians on a global, um, from the global space into this one platform. And, it, and all these performances, mostly people who are filming themselves at home, just performing straight, you know, to the camera, like to an iPad or your phone and sharing your music from this really intimate space or place and everybody convening on this platform in this way. And I noticed one thing um, that was really interesting and beautiful about it. There was a show from South Africa. Um, I can't I always mess up his first name, but Makatini, he's a South African pianist, you know, and he took the visual aspect of using the fact that it was um, something that was going to be seen and was done on video to, to, to post this beautiful message before the music actually started, you know, so it was kind of utilizing the medium in this way that not many people had really addressed, you know, in terms of how that they were doing it. But I thought, wow, that is so beautiful because, you know, it was this very visually beautiful thing and the message itself was so powerful. And then the music actually started. So that to me was like, well, then now see, there's an idea, like what would that look like if you were to take that and work with it? Like for instance, someone like yourself, maybe there's a way in which you could explore video in a new way where you could get your message out there um, to maybe even more people than you would on, a, on your normal, in terms of the way you would roll normally. You know, I feel like it's gonna give us the opportunity to really start, a, uh, using these, these the technology for the tools that they are maybe in new and different ways that might you know have some lifespan on the other side of this thing once we do get live and can play again for other people you know what i mean so um and also just in terms of the times what we're living through right now you know what do you want to say like where where do we want to go from here where are we now where are we moving you know as a people and and in terms of the arts and like i've been asking myself that a lot like you know so arnetta the question i wanted to ask you and also ursula since you're here you know this is so new agey so excuse me if i <laughs> if i do this but i always love this question which is if you could imagine yourself 25 years from now as an older woman, you know, and for you, Arnetta, it would be longer than that. Like, let's say 50 years from now, let's say you're 75, uh -huh. right? So for me and Ursula, it, it's not quite that much time. We don't have to get into that. But as older women, like, let's say at a distance, 
looking at ourselves now, what would you tell yourself? What would you ask yourself? What advice would you give yourself? I love that. I mean, I know this is new agey, but, but I, I kind of like the, the fact that you're relying on your own voice and an imagination of yourself in the future, you know, uh, and what would yeah. you, how do you see yourself and what would you say? Uh, I, I see myself as, you know, if I'm like 75 years old, I, I see myself as, as someone you know, that, that has actually fulfilled what they wanted to do just because that's just the kind of person I am. I get done whatever I, whatever I say I'm going to do. So I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be, you know, happy with myself. Uh, now, what I would tell myself, that that's a little tricky because I, I will be speaking from experience. So I'm not sure what experience I have at 75 <laughs> just yet. Um, but from right now uh i would just tell myself stay informed keep doing what i'm doing and just just be very smart about every move and to invest this is the time to invest i keep telling everybody i know everybody's tight on money but this is the time to invest this is the time to do it um i'm a firm believer in that uh because you know you reap what you sow so yeah, that's that's about the best I can answer that question. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll answer Ursula's question, but I want her to answer <laughs> this question before we move on. Yeah, Ursula, and then I'll answer. That's that's awesome, Arnetta. I would say congratulations, John. You made it. <laughs> Cause it's been rough. <sighs> that's that's what I was uh, seventy five. Oh my God, I made it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I would just be like, I hope I'm chilling somewhere, like, you know, away from humans for the most part. If I want to engage, I can engage, but I don't really want them around me at that point. And um, if I feel like engage coming out and sprinkling magic dust on people, I'll come out of my house in the woods. But by 75, I want to be chilling. I don't want to be around these people. Yeah, period. <laughs> so, so, so what, I'm, but I want, what I want you to answer is what would you say to yourself at 70? What would you say to you now as a 75? What would you say to yourself now? now? Yes. If I was 75 now? Yes. So look, so take that envision of yourself. What would you, what was advice would you give to yourself at this moment? Oh, if I was 75 now? Yes. Give, and looking at who you are now. Does that make sense? I would say, I would say good job, because I don't done a lot of work. And if I'm 75 right now, because I already do a lot of stuff. So if I'm 75, then I done done some shit. So yeah, good job. <laughs> good job. So I hear that, yeah. Ursula. Yeah, That's I mean, I, I mean the reason I'm asking this, crazy. I'm sorry. That's I'm a sorry. complicated, tricky question. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I presented it right because what I'm trying to get us to do is to imagine ourselves in the future. What would we say to ourselves now, as we are at this moment, not at 75? What would we say to ourselves, like looking at the person that we are now? So, not, in other words, for instance, if I, 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 all I'm, it's like kind of casting your wisdom forward, like all that you are now, you know? So for me, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna just come out and say it. I'm 60, I'm 63, right? I'm turning, am I turning 63? God, I can't even remember. I'm turning 63 this year, I think. And, um, you know, I, I mean, I might have a, maybe a good, another 20, good 20, I mean, another maybe good 20 years, maybe. I mean, I don't mean before I die, but let's say I live that long. You know what I'm saying? So this time in my life is, is I was just talking to a colleague the other day and we were both saying, you know, this is like some, this is like a sweet, it's a, there's a sweetness to this period because we still have our health. We still have our energy. We still have of these years of creativity that we could address. And we have the wisdom that we have gained to this point thus far in our lives. So I'm looking at like, so Arnetta, when I said, what is it that you really want 
What is it that you really want to do? These are the questions I'm asking myself right now because I'm a, I'm a lot older than you. I could be your mama, you know what I mean? So, uh, or a grandma. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm I, as an older woman, I'm really like really examining and reset, wanting to take this time to reset because mm -hmm. I want everything that I'm going to do moving forward to really matter, you know, and. I have to, one of the things I did want to say to you before, because I noticed we're, I did want to say, Arnetta, that I, you know, just, I don't know you very well, but I have to congratulate you for um, the decisions you've made thus far in your artistic life, because I feel like you're a very authentic person, you know, in your music and Thank in you. the way that you present yourself and in who you are. And it's, to, it's a, really nice thing to see, you know, like that, to feel that authenticity, you know, in, in you. And, and I know now that you're, you're actually um, thinking about the message, you know, and uh, in a new light because of what we're actually living through right now. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you're going to do. But I did want to, did want to comment to you as an older artist, female Black, that I really appreciate you and what you're doing. And, and it, it gives me joy to see someone at your age who's as together as you are and also that, that has that much sort of natural poise, you know, and confidence. So I did want to impart that to you before Thank you. the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, that's, that's the goal is to, to stay focused, you know, along the way. Um, Cause that you know that's that's very important that's the only way any of this is gonna you know keep keep his keep his purpose in the long run in the future as you were speaking on um and i know before this conversation ends i do want to answer ursula's question on what artists you know are doing during this time so i've always been big on you know branding like our brands are so important. I, I, I don't. I, I want to stop you though, so I can get your answer before I got to dip out. It's not what we're doing in this time. It's how we gonna move forward. Okay, how we're gonna move forward. So I think the best way for artists to move forward right now um, is almost the same answer: is learning how to really own your brand to the max. Like a lot of people, uh, literally narrow it down to just performing um, and, and going on a road when. I say, you know, it's a lot I, you could do from just right here. And I had to learn that. I had to sit down with myself and say, okay, what, what more is there to you, Arnetta? And then I look behind me and then I'm like, oh man, I got a whole rack of kicks that actually have a really good story that I can monetize on. That right there, I always tell people, people always say, oh, you have a lot of shoes. I say, I have a lot of shoes, which also means I have a lot of culture sitting behind me. That is a whole nother market in itself. So best believe they're, they're always telling people there's a method to my madness. This, this behind me, a lot of people just see it as buying. That's not just buying shoes. That's an investment right there. That is a whole brand in itself. Um, you know, as artists, you know, down the line, I always tell people, if you don't have a website, you should be working on a website right now so that in a couple months is on and popping. People now know where to buy your merch. Uh, when you tell people to go find your music, they get your music, your merchandise, your upcoming Zoom shows, this, that, and the other, since we don't know when this is going to end. Uh, you know, touring might not open up soon, but small stages may. This may be the time for indie artists to come out. This might be our time to shine, because right now, everybody's stage is the same size. So... <laughs> So that's about the that's that's one of the things I'm I'm like really scoping out right now. Um, I'm also thinking about what would be the new way touring would look like. Are driving shows going to be the thing? You know, so it's it's stuff like that. And then I I'm just th the kind of person I am when I think about stuff like that. I always think about okay, how much money am I going to have to invest to make sure that. I don't get swallowed up as an indie artist during this transition. So, you know, I'm taking money from my merchandise, from my teaching that I'm doing. I stress to all the artists, if you do not teach, please just find a mentor that will teach you how to teach so that in a month or two, you can start expounding on your teaching business, you know? 
start a platform for that. So I know I've been inspired to really hone in on that and potentially start a school for uh, inner city brass players. So yeah, it's just awesome. stuff, stuff like that. How old you be? I'm 26. So I'm, I'm getting up there. So I gotta, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm getting up there, so I gotta, I gotta start she's thinking. She's getting up. She's getting up. There. <laughs> no more, no more <laughs> um, now this, this, this was amazing. Thank you, Arnett. Look, I think we all have, you know, all of us at different levels and different ages have things to learn from each other. That is my, that's gonna be my parting word today because I'm completely committed to to this thing right here. You know, um, just because. Um, you know, Sumi is uh, 60 whatever and fabulous, and I'm mm -hmm. 50 whatever and fabulous, and you 20 whatever, you know, um, it's, it, we all have something we can learn from each other, you know, there Absolutely. are things you know, you know that we don't know, you know, like my 25 year old son, I'm like, hey, help me out, you know, but listen to me when I tell you something too, because there's some shit that I know that you don't know, right. so let's not do that, yeah, let's not absolutely. be like, oh, you know what I mean? Like, let's not be like, oh, I'm 52. Uh, Arnetta, you don't have nothing that you can teach me. That's not, nope. I need to learn some things. You need to learn some things. So we, need, we need to learn from each other. Absolutely. Swirl it around, make it work, and raise it up to the highest frequencies and levels. And um, this is awesome, Painted Bride and y'all. And I got yeah. it like, oh, thank you, Sumi, for inviting me to uh, speak and much love. Oh yeah, yeah that's great. Course. I'm glad you were here. And also, um, did uh, Laurel? Should we ask if there's anybody else who'd like to uh, pitch in or talk or ask question or anything like that? Sure. Is there anybody that wants to say anything or ask a question? I had a question to give people all <laughs> time to put their questions in. Um, for both of you, let's say two. If you could pick two songs that are part of like the soundtrack of your life right now, what would those two songs be? Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, that's a good soundtrack question. Soundtrack of our life in the sense of what we're listening to now or in the sense of just that would, would uh, kind of- Yeah, either things that you're listening it. to that are getting you through this time or, or songs that you feel like encapsulate this time for you. Songs that, okay, I got a song there, definitely. <laughs> It definitely captures this moment. Um, Jill Scott has this song called Watching Me. The lyrics to that song are crazy. So if y'all haven't is that, heard it. Is that, is that recent? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write that no, down. No, this, this song, that song, Watching Me. Ooh, ooh, see, I should know what album this song is on. Um, but yeah, it's a Jill Scott song from the, the early 2000s. And um. Yeah, that song pretty much hits right on the money with what we're dealing with right now. And um, I guess another song just to throw in, uh, Moonchild has this song called Strength that I really like. Uh, but yeah, that's that's those are just songs I can just throw out there real quick. I would need some time to sit with that question. <laughs> but those, those are two just off off top of the dome. Yeah, um, huh. I like, you know, so, I mean, not that this, these are the songs that I'm listening to at, at, currently at the moment, but there are those songs that I do think about in terms of these times. And, you know, for me, it's like uh, maybe Nina Simone's uh, Mississippi Goddamn, that one to, you know, like just before it's boldness and fierceness and also for it's the way it addresses the uh, racism and the, the struggle that we're having right now in this country, you know, the, the fight, the um, movement. Um, also like Marvin Gaye, maybe what's going on. Oh yeah, you know, that's, that's, yeah. A bit, that's a bit cliche, but still in a good way, you know. No, like that's a great one. Yeah, he's you know, those are such classics. Uh, Stevie, I'm sure we could go to Stevie Wonder for oh. for quite a few things. You know, some of his music is also very fierce and bold in terms of the messaging. You know, um, but there's so much in different types. You know. 
Yeah. Thank you. Let's see. So we're three minutes over our hour technically. Does anyone else want to say something, add something? Yes. <clears throat> How you doing? My name is Clayton Corley. Hey, Clayton. And, uh, hey, Clayton. <laughs> I told you, Sumi, I was going to tune in to you, too. Uh, I didn't even see you on um, <laughs> Hello, Arnetta. How you doing? I'm doing good. I've been trying to catch up with Arnetta for a while, but that's for another subject. That's for another. <laughs> uh, I host and produce Spotlight on Jazz and Poetry online. And <clears throat> this goes to, I'm not sure if it was you, Arnetta, or whether it was um, uh, Ursula Rucker that had spoken about how around the world we're seeing people protest about um, racism. I, mean, it was I think that, yeah, okay. I think that one thing that's unique about that in a, in a good way is that since everyone is pretty much home with this uh, lockdown, with this coronavirus, that has given people the opportunity to stop and look at some news and they're actually seeing what's going on where a lot of people are so busy with regular life that they're missing out on a lot of stuff. I mean, people didn't even really pay attention to much news. Um, not all news is, is thorough. I mean, you do have propaganda and stuff like that, but for the mm -hmm. most part, the media is zeroing in on, certain things and we have a chance since we're home looking at TV. I mean, I can only look at power Rangers so many times. Um, <laughs> you know, I just do that without there. Okay. Um, but it's given me an opportunity to see what's going on all over the place. And it's, it's so disheartening. So my question to the both of you is since we have this time that's idle and we're trying to stay as, healthy and safe as possible. Do you think that there still be relevance with your particular artistries? In other words, do you think people will, will say, okay, I haven't heard this for a while. I don't even want to listen to jazz anymore. I want to listen to something else. Um, if that makes sense, if that question makes sense. I would say absolutely. Uh, because I never wrote my music geared to one subject. <laughs> that's, mm. that's, how, that's how I look at it. Um, like my my songs uh, correlate to many different uh, you know situations. Like I have a song called "Pull Up on Them." That could mean anything. So <laughs> that's right. that's the advantage I have with you know making music using my trumpet as my voice because there's no words. So this song can mean. Right whatever you want it to mean. It's like how I initially wrote the song Pull Up On Them, you know, to address the haters, you know, as, you know, we're all, you know, we've all been successful in areas in our lives and we have all dealt with people that always have something to say somehow, some way. So for mm -hmm. me, you know, I wrote that song Pull Up On Them to address them, but in another light, you know, given like right now where we have a lot of things going on that needs to be addressed and you have people that really think we're going to sit here and just take it like we're going to treat them any kind of way because they're not going to say anything and, and then you got me i'm like a word oh well, i'm about to pull up on them then so now my song means that now my song means i'm I'm about to address all these social issues so now my song pull mm -hmm. up on them can, can be in that regard so and also with the sound of my music um you know, it's instrumental. So to in somebody's world, it can come off as jazz. And to somebody's world, it can come off as, you know, across, you know, with hip hop and R&B. You know, I just have a whole catalog purposely just so that it wasn't like put into a box. So I think my music will, you know, forever, my artistry, rather so will be, you know, relevant because I, I never make music that's, pinpoint down to just one situation, you know? So. Yeah. <clears throat> Miss Sumi? Well, I mean, that's a hard if question to answer in the sense that, uh, I mean, I don't worry about that because if I worried about that, uh, I, I wouldn't be making music right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. And I think that's one of the, the, the secrets in terms of being an artist is, you know, you, you're in, for, in it for the long haul. It's a, it's a journey. It's a path. 
and then life happens, you know, and then that at uh, that is what it is to be an artist is that you keep creating no matter what and that you um, you just keep making the art and and let 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 your audience find you, you know, uh, and and that does that is what happens actually, you know, so I try not to worry about that. I mean, I, I, I try to um, think about what it is I want to leave what it is I want to say, you know, um, how, how gathering the, the sort of like the, the wisdom that I've gained to this point from a musical perspective, because I've had a lot of different types of experiences moving forward. We were just talking about that, like what to do moving forward in, in the best way, you know, so I, I am, I do pause in the sense of like wanting to really think of wanting it to matter, you know, but I can't worry about it. You know? Yeah. Can I can I just before I remute myself for other people, I would just like to say number one, I'm a fan of both of yours. And I, I really appreciate um the music that both of you put forward. It's it's soothing for me and I get to brag to people that I know someone that's younger, because Arnetta's like my middle son's age. And you know my son Clayton too. Um, and soon I'm your age, I'm your age and, and I can relate to everything you said, especially your question about if you were 75 and looking back at yourself today, what kind of advice would you give? I just want to answer that real quick. I would want to in, be able to invest more because my sons invest a lot and they're really into that. Uh, investment in the market thing. But the other thing is to, that I would like to do is to be a little calmer with how I converse and relate to people. Cause sometimes I can, I could be a little impatient. So I think I would like to be a little bit more patient than I am right now. So <clears throat> that's what I would tell myself. Thank you very much for tuning, uh, letting me that's come on and say Clark. something. Yeah. This was just a wonderful experience. I, I've been on it from the beginning listening to you you all and I really enjoyed myself. Uh stay Thanks, safe, Corey. everybody. Okay. Uh does anyone else have a question or want to say something before we wrap up? Well, I guess I guess I'll take this time to say I just wanna thank, you know, Painted Bride, uh one for for the grant. And two for for this, like this is great. Um, I feel like this is very much needed uh, right now. Um, Cause you know, as artists, we're we're always asked to perform, and you you know, and I, I like when people give us the opportunity to you know speak our minds. Um, it's actually can be a bit therapeutic to have conversations like this at the same time. Um, so this is is again is very is very necessary. Uh, given that these are much needed conversations because they intertwine with the arts and it's, it's just very, very important. And I know I learned a lot today. So again, I, I'll say thank you to, you know, everybody, everybody to, for tuning in and such. And, uh, you know, thank you for, you know, the great conversation. We had a good conversation on here. Yeah, Arnetta. Yeah, great. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. And also I'd like to thank the Painted Bride as well. And also, um, I was I had an idea as we were talking, Arnetta, that maybe you and I could collaborate on a song, mm -hmm. something inter intergenerational that we might want to do as a as a token of our thanks to the Painted Bride, maybe even. Wow. Yeah, something I'm like, down. You know, maybe like a some type of song, uh, something. We should do something. It doesn't have to be a huge project. It could be something that we just create together, like maybe just one. Now, who knows? We, we can brainstorm mm -hmm. on that. I'm just going to throw it out there. That's beautiful. Yeah. That gives me chills. Thank you. Thank you both. It's been a great conversation. Yes. Really great. Thank you. Oh, wait, Lenny's Lenny, trying to... I, Lenny, unmute I'm yourself. Lenny. <laughs> wait, I think I might... There you go. Are you... you have, we can't hear you. Mute yourself. There you, now. there you go. There you I, go. Oh, I just want to thank you both so much for giving us all a lot to think about. Um, it was very stimulating and um, 
Uh, and I think the choice of you two was really good, you know, to get things rolling. As the bra, you know, the bra, we're, we're still, we're, we're in the same boat that everybody else is in. We're learning as we go in this uh, age that we're in now, the times. And um, um, so we're, we're, we're with you and I hope you're with us. Absolutely, Lenny. Thank you. Okay. Absolutely. Thanks, Thank Laura. you. Thanks, everybody. Thank yeah. you, Nash. All right, Arnetta, you and I, we'll, we'll have a talk. Yes, soon. yes, all definitely. All definitely. right. Okay. Thank you all again. All right. Take all right. care. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.